I, I didn't kill the family dog. It was your sister? After his sister was killed, he never said another word about it. Jonathan never even said he was sorry. We already have all the answers about the HBO series starring Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. And surprises. Oftentimes in stories of mystery, suspense, and criminal cases, we expect a twisted plot, a surprising ending, and a resolution that we would not expect in a million years. But in the end, in life and from time to time in fiction, the most logical answer is the most accurate. The Undoing has played with that card, and in its final episode, it has shown us all its play. The resolution? Predictable how has it been carried out? Very satisfactory. Nicole Kidman's wig? Impolute? Let's quickly recap before getting into the matter. This series created by David E. Kelly and based on the novel You Already Knew It by Jean Hanf Korolitz, introduces us to a wealthy New York family, the Frasers, who hides many secrets behind their facade of high-class perfection. Contact with Elena Alves. Excuse me, I live here. Jonathan Frazier, Hugh Grant, his wife Grace, Nicole Kidman, and their son Henry, Noah Jupe, watch their world collapse due to a tragic event. The murder of Elena Alves, Matilda de Angelis, who was moving in her own circles by being the mother of one of Henry's schoolmates. In addition, he had an affair extramarital with Jonathan, which makes him the main suspect in the case. Well, also the fact that they frolicked shortly before his death seems quite incriminating. After five episodes of theories, new leads and accusations left and right, we know the truth. Who is Elena's killer? Protecting his father. They can and they likely will. They could arrest Henry. They can blame Henry? They can. The truth is that the cliffhanger of the fifth episode made things pretty clear. Henry had hidden the murder weapon, the mallet, in his violin case for three months. Suspicious, right? We now know that he found it in his suburban home, buried in the rubble of a chimney. Believing that this was the proof of his father's guilt. <laughs> the dishwasher. What? To protect you. He washed it up to two times in the dishwasher and hid it. And indeed, no matter how many versions the guy wants to invent, he even comes up with the idea of framing his own son. Okay. Are you maybe actually, they maybe they don't. Are you actually accusing our son? No, Reality falls under its own weight. Yes, Jonathan Frazier is the murderer. In the end it will be true what they say that the first impression is always correct. I'm not. I'm not. I fucking heard you! The Undoing has tried to mislead us with secondary elements that led nowhere, like that video that showed Grace walking near the crime scene, or the entire existence of the detective played by Edgar Ramirez, but in the end, the first theory of the story has turned out to be correct. Grace, you have always seen things so clearly, seen exactly how they will play out. Jonathan, who had a secret relationship with Elena, became violent because the woman was getting too close to her family and smashed her to pieces in his art studio. But until you reach that resolution, you have to understand something else. That this disgraced oncologist was a true sociopath. The key is in the conversation that Grace has with his mother by video call and in which she tells him that Jonathan's sister was run over when she ran away from home while he was taking care of her. But there was not an iota of remorse, guilt or pain in the little boy. He was not able to feel that empathy. It was empty of humanity. I could never do such a thing, not, not to her, and not to him. <laughs> Grace later suspected he was suffering from a narcissistic disorder, but simply blamed it on an excess of male ego. Now all those pieces fit together. I made a stupid decision. His lack of conscience, of differentiating good and evil, of processing feelings towards the well-being of others, it makes him a monster. And in Elena's killer. You took it to the dry cleaners on your way to Lake George. It is precisely this conversation between Grace and Jonathan's mother that ends up triggering the end of the undoing. First, he has a serious conversation with his son Henry. Do you want his father to remain part of the family or do you want him to pay for his crimes? We do not hear the answer, but we will intuit it immediately. In court, Grace asks the lawyer Haley, no madum is Winnie, to take a statement, which will defend the innocence of her husband, who is convinced. And she does so when it is the defense's turn to ask questions, but when it is the prosecutor's turn, the whole cake is revealed. 
Grace has colluded with the prosecution, telling them about that event from Jonathan's childhood and instigating this moment of revelation in which she can say out loud and for the record that the accused is a dangerous and perfectly capable narcissist. Here. You should be ashamed. Don't make me call security. Come on, for not. For his lack of empathy, of committing murder. She does it, yes, in a convincing way. I'm... I'm willing... to testify. She continues in her role as defender wife, but the prosecutor takes out the whole truth, sentencing any hope that her husband will win the trial. The face of his lawyer is a real poem. I was terrified in the moment. Now we understand that favor that she asked her lawyer friend Sylvia, Lily Rabe, since the conversations with the prosecution have surely been through her. Also, pay attention to detail. Grace could have been called as a witness for the prosecution and incriminate her husband directly, but what she does is maintain her role from the defense so that, once she releases the bombshell she releases. Doesn't know how to suffer, that he's not capable of remorse or contrition. The defense attorney cannot save the situation in any way because your question time is over. Can a more elegant and devastating judicial Zaska be made? We take off our hats. But the story does not end here. On the morning of the reading of the sentence, Jonathan sends a message to his son and asks him to have breakfast together because it could be the last time in a long time that they can do it. Henry agrees but finds himself locked in the car with his father, who knows where he's driving. Luckily, the alarms begin to sound quickly. The absence in the courts and the absence at school make Grace connect the ropes in a matter of seconds and the police mobilize to intercept the vehicle as soon as possible. Come. Grace and her father, Donald Sutherland, go by helicopter because they are cooler than anyone. Again, either my wife or my son, I will hurt you. I will fucking hurt you. You'll never hurt me. Besieged by the police, Jonathan stops in the middle of a bridge, gets out of the car and threatens to commit suicide. But Grace comes running and there is something in her eyes that seems to indicate that she is going to forgive him, that everything will be fine, that life will go back to the way it used to be, but of course not, you dork. The woman grabs her son and takes him away, turning her back on the man with whom she has spent almost two decades of her life and who is now being handcuffed on his way to jail. The last image is his contorted face watching the helicopter fly away with his family. An ending worthy of a cheap soap opera. And it is that, although we have spent six weeks hooked on its mystery, the Undoingit does not invent or improve anything that we have not seen before. And it ends quite predictably, albeit satisfactory for those involved. Now they can return to their rich life without thinking about what will happen to the poor family, the Alves, who after all are the true victims of this whole story. Didn't get rid of the fucking hammer. You hear that? Hope you liked that video and if you haven't subscribed this channel, do subscribe it and we will see you in the next video.